Hey guys, Brian Healthmarker here. As you guys know, last year I took first place in nationals for the Veterans Yearly Art Competition. I got to go up to Kalamazoo, Michigan and hang out for a week and meet a bunch of cool people. At the end of the event, the last day, all the veterans are standing in front of their art piece and people are coming around asking them questions about it. A lady named Darlene came up and started crying a little bit in front of mine. Mine had to do with veteran suicide awareness. Uh, she thanked me for doing the drawing and I said, you're welcome. And then she told me that her younger brother, who was an Army veteran, had committed suicide three months before the event. Um, that really touched my heart, so I decided that I would do a drawing for her for free. She was also nice enough to write a short story about his life that I will be reading in the background of this video. If you or anyone you know have a veteran in their lives that they have lost and would like a free drawing, and maybe you could tell their story to help bring awareness and in remembrance of them, please email me at the end of this video. Uh, this story is about John Puckett, so R.I.P. brother, and I thank you for your service. John was born on October 24, 1963. He was the son of Lee and Leona Puckett. He had two sisters and one brother. Deborah was the oldest, then Joe, who served in the Marines. Then there was me, and then John. John was a crazy kid. He had no fear. He used to jump his bike. One time when Mom came home early, and he was building up a ramp to jump the fence, of course mom stopped him. He also was caught bringing his bike onto the roof of the garage because he was going to see how long he could stay in the air like Evil Knievel. As an adult he would tease mom, it was her fault he wasn't rich because she never let him jump his bike. He stayed with my ex-husband and me for a summer in Norfolk and we had so much fun. John became very close to my daughter Shailene. She spent a summer with him after telling him I was so mean and she hated me. John called and I said, okay, you can have her for the summer. She came home and was so happy to be back. While staying with her uncle, he made her keep her room clean, bed made. Before she could go outside, she had to have all her chores done. She found out fast, living with me wasn't so bad. John joined the military in December of 1983. Mom said he joined because he was getting married and wanted to support his wife. After mom passed, we found out John joined the military after getting into trouble with the law. Not sure what he did, the story is he got caught selling pot. The judge said, join the military or go to jail, so he joined. Not sure if that is true, but that is what the kids here were told. John married Lynette Dunton and had four kids, Natasha, John, Bettina, and Rachel. John's family always came first. When John's wife was pregnant with her son, I was pregnant with my daughter, but she came early and died in my arms. When John got the call I was losing my baby, he started to head home from Texas. Mom had to convince John not to come because his wife was going to deliver any day. He was so sweet. When John finally came home for good, John wanted nothing to do with the government. He became a cross-country truck driver until his wife found him a local job, driving for Brenner Oil. John used to text my daughter Shailene when he was upset. He would text her, shut up kid. Of course she would text back, make me. They would go back and forth in comments till he would open up and start telling her what was wrong. With me, he would text me and tell me to go to work. Then our dad passed away unexpectedly while our mom was going through chemo. John took it hard but had to be strong for mom. He would stop and spend time with mom and even went to Florida to visit after his wife left him. John had a really hard time. He would say, my life isn't worth the cost of a bullet. Mom had told him she couldn't live if one of her children had killed themselves. Through all that time, mom was his only confidant. He talked to her about what he went through overseas. Mom reached out to a friend in the American Legion who tried to help John, but he wouldn't get professional help. John refused because he was afraid of losing his guns. For seven years, they became even closer before the cancer went into her brain. As she was on her deathbed, John was there not showing his feelings, drinking way too much. She told his daughter to get him help. My son talked to his uncle John who told him not to join the military. That would be the dumbest thing you could do. Mom warned his kids and everyone to watch him. He was suicidal. Michael asked John if he was okay and mentioned he was concerned about him. John told him he would be okay because only a coward would kill himself. Michael struggles with that since they found John's body. Mom's funeral was when I knew I lost him. He held my hand and said, thanks sis for all that you do. I love you. He hugged my daughter and told her to be good. Shook my son's hand and walked away. He stopped texting. He stopped answering phone calls. He took his older brother out for a beer and dinner and gave Joe some things. 
then went to Florida to visit Debbie, his oldest sister. John returned from Florida on Friday, went to a bar where he was seen by his work. That night, John had passed out in his truck and a co-worker found him, woke him up and told him to go inside and go to bed. They had a sleeping space in a shower like a truck stop where he worked. On Saturday, his kids were looking for him. On Monday, I got a call to let me know John was missing and it was going on the news that night. I knew he was gone when I got that call. They found John's body on March 16 by the train tracks that ran behind his work. I don't know what all went on when he was overseas, what he saw or did, but John had a huge heart and he hated to see people hurt, especially children. I believe because of his PTSD, his wife left him and his pain was very deep. My brother was no coward. He lived with the brain injury we call PTSD. He tried so hard to live every day, but with mom being gone, he just couldn't do life anymore. 22 veterans a day commit suicide. Some never diagnosed with PTSD. 22 veterans a day is 22 too many. The government owes our veterans better than that. John is gone. His family is devastated. There's not a day that goes by. We don't think of him. Personally, I miss his text telling me to go to work. The last text he sent was of a lake that had a road leading to it, which ended at the lake. He texted that picture to his ex-wife and said, this is where the road ends. I pray he is at peace. His story shows he had a life with people who loved him. He had four kids who grieved for him daily, eight grandchildren that want to know why he's gone, not to mention all the rest of us. I tell my brother's story in the hopes that it will prevent one or more veterans from becoming one of the 22, to let veterans know that PTSD is like an injury. Please seek help. Please reach out for those who love you. Thank you for letting me tell John's story.